Oh, the the reason, yeah, the re- re- thing that I remembered about Foon specifically was that they uh, posted, uh, it's like, the worst feeling in the world is Googling a, like, very specific, uh, like, computer problem and finding a result and then realizing it is you who posted oh, that question geez. to a, a forum like, oh. eight years ago and never got a response. Oh, geez. wow. It's like, oh, yes, yeah, someone has the exact problem. It was me. It was me almost a decade ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's God. brutal. That's brutal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> life is folding on top of itself <laughs> yeah those dead forum posts <laughs> yeah it's like, well i guess i'm never solving that problem nope Everybody. Welcome to Pursuing Pixels. My name's Kevin Portelli, and I'm here tonight with John Hines. Hey there. And Randall Nolery. Hey, folks. And we are back, as always, to uh, talk about some video games. And uh, I guess we can uh, kick things off with uh, something we haven't done in ages, which Whoa. is, uh, I guess we haven't done it quite yet, but we're getting ready to uh, sync up for an online gaming session uh, this weekend. So a few days after we record this here. Um, I have yet to play it at all whatsoever. John's in the same boat as me, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but Mario Strikers, there's a new Mario Strikers soccer game out. Actually, what, what is even the name of it? Mario Strikers? Battle League. Okay, Ooh. Battle League. Okay. And I'm kind of, I'm very curious. Randall's the only one of us that's played this so far. And again, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to playing this uh, this weekend because the original Mario Strikers on GameCube is like maybe... My favorite multi, well, whatever. Not to hyperbolize, but it's one yeah, of my no, favorite. It's, yeah. it's, it's you can very hyperbolize. Good. It's like on top five yeah. multiplayer, like couch co-op or not couch co-op, but couch competitive. Yep. You know Local whether it's I mean like yep. I can't yeah I can't count how many times like with three different groups of friends. I yep. like the band I was in in high school. That group of friends <laughs> we were diehard in that game, and then the Best Buy crew yep. like Randall, you, Milton, and I, and Tina, and whoever, uh, Adam, who basically yep. AK, whoever else would play with us, and then the band, uh, boss fight guys would play not all the time, but yeah, DJ, John, yeah, no, Glenn, and I. Good, it, we, so we had a good, good run for basically until DJ just got like too good at it. Like, <laughs> yes. it not Once fun he started anymore. practicing Surprise. and consistently yeah, exactly. winning every match, <laughs> just like, okay, I can, I can maybe win once out of every like 30. Geez, okay, this isn't fun anymore. Yeah. Wow, um, but. We yeah DJ as again no surprise no surprise um but yeah I I was a little bit how how did you feel about Mario Strikers uh, charged on the Wii I was a little bit kind of let down by that one it wasn't necessarily bad per se but it just the way they changed the balance up with like giving all the secondary characters like extra abilities yeah. to like have like it, it almost it just changed things up a little too much where it it felt like like the hammer bros i remember in particular were just like overpowered and then the combination of that and then the way they changed the super strikes where you could kind of use you could score up to like five or six right. goals but you could also use the wii mote to like block as a goalie you know kind of aim at the screen and like aim your goalie's hands and in a lot of cases if you got good enough you could block all of them so it's like the super strikes almost became useless or they were like too overpowered right. depending on what your skill level was at defending but it just kind of i don't know it just kind of, i just didn't end up really playing it all that much but everything they've shown from the new battle league version of strikers looks pretty cool and obviously the sports games have been a little bit of a mixed bag for the mario games like i think we all liked tennis aces quite a bit yeah. at least the overall like gameplay the multiplayer and like, part yeah, yeah yeah like the the arcade like the actual feel of the game yeah. um but obviously i've you know i've bagged on golf enough on this podcast but <laughs> um yeah i don't know what do you what do you think of strikers for some uh first impressions because i'm sure we're gonna probably dig into this one again oh after yeah we, we have we our have session to. but it's, yeah it feels wrong to even talk about it right now but y'all i know y'all twisted my arm to do so so i'm well I'm we want to know i need to know I'm kind of on the edge of my seat because I just ordered it. I even like wait. I like <laughs> didn't pre-order it right away. I was just like, I'm just gonna order it like last. This is second. the long con of Randall just making you angry. <laughs> He's like told you like, yeah, you, you should still order this game. <laughs> yeah, remember remember everything you said about golf. Uh, so yeah, you know before before I get into those impressions, uh, I will say, <laughs> you know again, just like Kevin said, I'm I'm 
like I was also huge on the original Mario Strikers on on GameCube, uh, and I would agree, probably one of my favorite local multiplayer experiences I've ever had is playing Mario Strikers on GameCube. Like it's on that level. Yeah. It, yeah. it really is. And then it's amazing. similarly, you know, with charged, like I'm a big Wii game collector and I don't own that game. I've only hmm. played that game a couple of times and you know, you never owned it. No. Interesting. I honestly Interesting. never heard of it. Like you, I didn't think there was a Wii Soccer <laughs> it had online play and everything and it like because well, I, I think we even played a few rounds do you remember jeff uh avila from oh yeah. uh best buy i played a few rounds with him nice uh me and my brother i remember one game me and my brother like beat these uh this team we were playing like 35 to 2 or something <laughs> like again the balance is just so i uh, they they were clearly just weren't playing after a certain point we yeah. just kept getting like those five goal you know super strikes but it was just like i, I don't know i i think the main thing too was like the not that the first game wasn't complex in its controls, but again, because it was kind of like you just had your main captain that had like the main move. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like a passes, B shoots. This is speed burst. Hold it down the whole time. Pretty this much. And like, yeah. Yeah. Like you, you can explain it. Anybody who's like played an arcade game and has some, you know, familiarity with games on that level can pretty much get into the original strikers right away. Yep. Um, and charge kind of got away from that, I thought. Yeah. And that's what the reviews seem to say. And I think that's why I kind of stayed away from it, too. Besides the brokenness yeah. of everything you just described, I just remember seeing like screenshots of like yoshi's egg or birdo or whoever like their egg just rolling into the goal and like way too easily scoring like a gajillion goals like you're saying and like ah eh, you know yeah. this doesn't look so different from the gamecube one that i feel the need to get it and you know i can literally play the gamecube one on this wii so yeah I think and it's it, up until now <laughs> at least for up until now it was definitely the preferred like i would yes. never go back and play the wii one and i still would I haven't in ages, but I still would definitely fire up oh, the, yeah. the GameCube no one. Doubt. Unless unless you're about to say <laughs> some good things about uh Battle League here. You know, I will say some good things about Battle yes. League here. Oh um, yes. It, I'm so happy. It to hear feels this. good. It feels real good to play. They nailed the control of this game. It feels to me uh, granted I am also someone that hasn't played that GameCube Strikers game in years. Years. Probably yeah. the last time we played it, Kevin, whenever that was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um so, okay. so long yeah, time decade. ago. Decade. <laughs> decade or Probably. so. Maybe maybe a little less, but uh yeah. Um, give or take but no it feels to me it feels what i remember to be the controls from that game just now on switch and so that's a great thing uh they've added a few things kind of around the edges uh you still have your super strikes they call them hyper strikes now but they're effectively still the same thing where you kind of have to line up the you know there's kind of like a a power meter thing like a golf swing in a lot of games and you kind of have to line it up at a couple of points in you know in the white areas to and it's a timing thing and you know all the while there's characters on the opposing team that are throwing items at you or trying to tackle you while you're trying to get it off hoping you have enough space it's all that same sort of stuff right um yeah but uh the, the couple of things they added that I can't remember if they were in either one of the previous strikers is the ability to dodge. There's kind of like a quick dodge button. I don't remember. I think if they had that as well. Yeah, because yeah. you, you could like flick the C stick on the That's GameCube right. controller. I think you could press a shoulder button, too, but I always use the because, yeah, you C could stick. body check people in that game. So that was yes. a, that was a you could like wait. Oh, you yeah. And you would that. you would actually get a speed burst if you like dodge uh, yeah. somebody that was slide tackling or going for a yeah, tackle and you did that dodge at perfect timing. You'd get like a mushroom burst almost. I should have played that <gasps> version before I talked about it here. But here we are. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've got it. I've got it baked in my brain. Don't you worry, because one of the. One of the things I'm wondering, too, is it looks like the new game, like the original game, you had your captain and then you would pick like either Toad or yeah. you'd pick like one sidekick and the then correct your answer three is players. Waluigi plus Toads. Everyone yes. knows that, but continue. Ooh. Yeah. yeah but, well, Waluigi in the new game, it, plus Hammer Bros. That works, it, too. In, in the new game, I got the impression that you picked multiple like characters yes. on your team. Yes. So it's there aren't like necessarily like minion sidekick no. characters. They're just like kind of like you pick peach and yoshi and 
Luigi and whoever. Right. You pick your your team essentially of of basically main Nintendo characters, um, all of which kind of yeah. have their own stats, basically, you know, and speed and shooting and passing and tackling and all that stuff. Um, yeah. And then on top of that, what they've added to this is the ability to give your characters gear so they can equip gear. And the, the gear is all, you know, kind of um, pluses and minuses on these different stats based on how you want, you know, the, the character to perform. So you can give your Bowser a little bit more speed than he might already have, but it might take away from his technique. And technique is your ability to kind of line up those strikes, those hyper strikes or whatever, you know. So you'll have a smaller window there that way. Or you might have okay. less tackling or, you know, less of a, you know, passing ability, whatever it might be. And is that yeah. more like how the like Mario Kart Eight is, where the characters yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, don't yeah. matter as much, and it's mostly the equipment, or is it mostly the characters, and then the equipment is like fine tuning? Mostly the characters and the equipment is fine tuning. I would say I okay. like the sound of that. I yeah. like the sound of that. Yeah, same. Yeah, they they still some... feel different enough. I would say yeah. And I like that, too, because if I'm not mistaken, like all the characters in Strikers, the original had on GameCube had different stats, obviously, like they played differently. But I don't think they like showed you what those stats were. It was all just kind of like, oh, Mm -hmm. I I just have a feel of, you know, Bowser's obviously slower and, you know, his shots go a little bit faster. But I don't think they had I could be misremembering, but I don't think they had like actual stats and i'm I'm assuming they kind of do here mario yes. kart style yes that, definitely that's exactly mario like kart style. picturing it yeah yep very much mario kart style where you know you press the plus button and you can see all the stats of your cart and all the different things that way um so yeah. that's it's kind of cool to like pick your team and and have different feel for like oh i you know i i want some more scoring so let's put like rosalina and it's cool too because you've got those newer nintendo characters in there as as playable characters right so yeah, Rosalina, Waluigi. Unfortunately, Waluigi so far has not crotch chopped when he's. Oh, so I, you know, take that with a garbage game. game. Exactly, Ugh, not yeah. deal breaker. I'm with you. First they first they cancel Mario Spikers, the, the <laughs> oh. wrestling uh, crossover. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Unreal. Oh, I Unreal. About that. Heartbreak from the same team, no less. Yeah, next level games. Yeah. <laughs> The best. They're, they're truly, <laughs> oh, do truly they, next level. Do we have the uh, bespoke uh, voice acting of next level games by no. each character? No. They took I, out the best parts of the game. I think there is that there's still voice great. acting, but you know, but no, there's no next level games at the beginning because next Nintendo level is, games. <laughs> or that. Yeah, there's no. It was always fun. Like, who's it going to be this time? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I, I wish uh, that's not now, there. So that another question I have, I guess, too, is like. So in the original game, too, where you would have I think it was you'd have a team of four. So you'd have your captain and then three minions. Maybe it was maybe it was four minions, but whatever it was, Mm -hmm. only your captain could do that super strike or hyper strike. Your other characters couldn't do that. They didn't even have like they did in uh, charged on the Wii. Like they didn't have like their kind of secondary, almost like semi special shot like they did. Like it was just like hyper or uh, whatever super strike hyper strike with your main captain or regular shots with everybody else so can you do a super strike with anybody or do you yes. still have a captain now no you can super strike with any of your characters on your team that's interesting that and are they different the f- super strikes per character or is it just like is it the same for everyone it's the same mechanics to perform a hyper strike but they all have unique animations which are pretty fun and okay. they do everyone i've seen so far looks great I am curious. And I to really see love the style. What, the style is fantastic, and I'm kind of curious yeah. to see what y'all's impression of of this game is. As far as so, some people online have been complaining. I've been less online, but I've still heard this that yeah. you know the hyper strikes. There's the animations take a long time to kind of execute. I don't mind because in my mind, strikers and other GameCube games of that era are very like drink as you play games, right? So yep, this that's is exactly my what I was like a perfect little break. Exactly. It's just like let's chill out, folks. Just get your drink, watch the cool animation. Something silly or dumb or fun's gonna happen and it's all right. Or, or wipe like your time. hands because they've been sweating. It's a high <laughs> like that is yeah. always yeah, what t- I take a breath. Like yep. that's I've or I appreciate like taunt yep. taunt the people you're playing against. Sure. Like yes. oh yeah, like you know you oh, it's have to, coming. <laughs> you literally have to watch these two goals go in for like seven seconds. Yep. You have to just wait for it to happen. Yep. And I just get to watch it. And uh, that's the best thing about strikers. And again, it, it kind of lost it in the Wii version because you could again I, at least I got good enough at the goalkeeping and my brother as well were like 
we, at least when we played each other, we almost wouldn't score unless you like on, wow. on the super strikes, like unless you know, unless yeah, we unless messed, messed up, up or like yeah. the Wii remote didn't right. register on the sensor bar or something, you right. know, like we pretty much saved them all. Whereas like when you could score those, just the two goal, uh, you know, cause if you score a, a super strike or whatever, hyper strike, it counts. I'm assuming still for two in the yep. new one, two, like yep. you could really make a comeback when you oh, felt yeah. like, man, I'm, I'm down by five goals with 30 seconds left and I still might win this game. It's like, totally you, feasible. You, yeah. Especially because the way you could change the settings kind of like you can in smash brothers too. again, back to, I'm talking about the original game here, but I'm hoping it's the same here. I really loved the Cause some of my friends in the high school band always like to play with no items on. And I was like, no, that's not the game. Like, yeah. The items are fun. You, well, and you get punished. Like if you, if right. you tackle somebody yes. that doesn't yes. have the ball, then that's the other all team here. gets an item. And it's yep. like that you need that. That's what balances the game. Yep. Turn off Bowser. If you want, go ahead. Like yeah. in the original, how he would just like smash right. down and tilt this, but it was just like so random and whatever. It didn't matter. But yep. to me at least, but yeah, the items are really what balanced the game. Cause it was like, you had to choose, do I want to take out and again, in the first game, because there was only one captain, you could kind of cheese it a little bit and be like, OK, I'm just going to stalk Waluigi and just yep. make sure he never gets a chance to stand up. So I kind of yep. like that you can strike, you play with like any, you can strike with any character now. Yeah, you can, which is awesome. And then like the the passing and one timers and everything else feel really good. Uh, so like it's all you, about that lob pass. Yeah, the lob pass is still there. Like, so, yeah. you know, a lot of times I'm more successful scoring regular goals than I might be even trying to pull off hyper strikes, you know. So it's, it's, yeah, there's kind of a good kind of give and take there in, in the way that the gameplay feels. Uh, unfortunately, there is no more alligator goalies, which is also another downside. No, uh, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> No. Uh, yeah. So, what do they have? Do you do you actually pick a goalie? No, they're uh they're they're one of the like it kind of look like one of the the Koopa dudes, like one of the more generic Koopa dudes. Um, oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Those Which gators is, had so much personality. I know. I I love that our biggest complaints of this game are the things that matter the absolute <laughs> least, like yeah. all the cosmetic stuff. But well, like, I'm, I'm actually to be I'm pumped to see it in action because like even the GameCube game looks even still looks. Yeah freaking great progressive like, scan, I remember I, baby that's how is how are the electrocution animations no they're still oh, good like yeah there's yeah. still a lot of like, going on yeah you gotta have <laughs> luigi's like <laughs> luigi and peach are the most memorable to me for whatever he's just like wah, 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 wah. i think they, they've oh dialed it down God. a little bit unfortunately but it's still there yeah that's okay yeah. yeah it's it's so satisfying yeah god i can't wait to play this weekend <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> can't wait to play this weekend. Yep. And I hope we can squeeze in a little turtles as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to play. I've only just kind of scratched the surface, but I'm, I'm itching for some some online gaming. It's been a while. Me too. Yeah. No, I'm down. I'll I'll, I'll leave it there because we're going to talk more about this video game. Yeah. And one of the future in the future. Podcasts. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. hoping this is a long legs game because I was hoping that for Mario Golf Super Rush and it, I didn't get it. Yeah, and I, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be like, oh, and I didn't get it. Now I deserve this. But um, <laughs> I, I really I'm just really hoping that Strikers hits the mark. And it sounds like it has so far. So I'm I'm excited to dig in. Yes. Um, but, yeah, I've got a, a few games that I wanted to shout out today. I'm going to do a couple real quick here, kind of more arcadey games. And then I'll throw it over to John before I wrap up with the game. I've kind of been digging deeper into. But, uh, you know, uh, there's a new punk cake game out. So, you know, I got to talk about it. Um uh, they just released their latest game called Ecstatic, and it, it might be, I think I've said this pretty much every time. Every single game. game. <laughs> but because I, I know I said it about Shotgun King, I was like, this might be their their best game. And I know they actually said like Shotgun King has been so successful for them. Like they brought it to Steam right away because it like, I guess because of being in Ludum Dar and winning Ludum Dar. Sure. Um, and then going like it just really caught on. So they're like they're actually expanding upon it even further nice. and like working on updates. They actually said they might even bring in like guest developers to work work on future games because like they've gotten so overloaded with like yeah. like they've added like mod support to the game and all wow. sorts of crazy stuff that like wasn't originally in the plans but anyways their new game ecstatic is like this top down if it at first i was like oh it looks kind of a lot like antichrypt which was their first game and also still kind of one of my favorites um but it's like a top down arena based arcade shooter it's got those really great like just super stylish pixel art uh that almost like they use their own engine called sugar that the one of the developers remy um it's like a custom engine that they developed Jeez. um 
But uh, but yeah, the game, you basically control this spider and you play this game entirely with the mouse, which at first I was like, ah, oh, man, they keep making all these mouse only games. And like for Shotgun King, where it's turn based, like I'm all about that. But where it's like mouse and action, I'm always like a little bit dicey. But mm. if I don't have to move around with the keyboard, I can it's a little easier. So the way this game works, you have this spider that you're running around in this arena and just trying to kill all the enemies that pop up that basically pop up and attack to the beat of the music. There's three different songs that are essentially three different levels. And then the way the controls work are basically wherever you're aiming the cursor, if you're not clicking down on the left uh, mouse button, you're not moving and you're actually kind of like aiming. It's like your Uh. reticle for aiming. And it almost works like res where you have to like kind of hover over Uh. an enemy for a while and then it locks on and targets them. Yeah. And then you if you're holding down left click, then your spider will start then scampering towards whatever direction that like wherever your cursor is aimed, it kind of changes into an arrow and your spider starts going towards that. But then it also, you pick up a bunch of different power-ups that either like upgrade your ammo or even like expand this, like there's like a drill power-up that literally expands the size of the arena. Like it drills out more Jeez. real estate for like the, yeah, you have more room and you get speed power-ups and then fangs, which is almost like a melee attack. And you can pick up multiples of each of those to like upgrade at multiple levels, but you can also target and shoot the power ups. Like all, your attacks are always like a homing attacks. Like again, like res. So once you're like locked onto an enemy, you're permanently locked on as long as you have enough missiles for it. And then when you right click that fires like missiles out of your butt, essentially, which also you can kind of use to like as a, like a dash mechanic, uh. essentially, like if you time it just right, or even even if you're not moving, you can kind of use it just to like boost yourself out of the way, out of an and attack then it also, or something. Yeah, exactly. And and you also have uh, one of the power ups. You don't start with it, but you pretty much are guaranteed to get it on a run. Not I shouldn't say guaranteed, but you're probably going to come across the freeze power up, which pretty much works then like super hot, where like time is like slowed to a crawl when you're not moving and then when you move the bullets and, and it moves a little quicker than it does in super hot. It's not like totally right. Pretty much completely stopped. I know it still crawls ahead in super hot as well, but just the, the style of the game, the music actually, when I played last, I did like a kind of like a first look stream and I've actually played it a couple more times since. And then they actually just added a, There were only two tracks in the game. Now they just added a third track, but I was playing on normal difficulty and just getting my ass kicked <laughs> And they have easy difficulty, which is nice, but they also had like hard and then they had, I think, insane and they had ecstatic difficulty, which is the name of the game. Um, But I'm assuming that's the hardest difficulty as well. And man, oh man, but this game, it just has so much juice, so much amazing music. Again, like Pentadrangle is on the music all the time. Uh, the composer from the Cyber Shadow soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're doing all the soundtracks for Punk Cake now. So nice. Um, they've been doing that for a while. I think since like game number three or four, maybe even since their second game, I think they just like officially kind of brought them onto the team maybe four or five games ago. But Smart move. Yeah, seriously, it's been a huge addition or even for games like uh, I know I talked a little bit, I think, on the podcast about Shroom Catect, which is like the exact opposite of this game, but also played entirely with a mouse. But it's like the music is a huge part of why I would just sit there for like two or three hours and just, you know, just kind of really not doing anything other than like either I was streaming and, you know, chatting with whoever or listening to a podcast and just, you know, building little mushroom houses that I really didn't care that much about like it wasn't like i was like oh man i really want to make a perfect i was just like i just wanted i'm just chilling you know just vibing and the music was a, a big part of that but uh yeah ecstatic complete opposite end of the spectrum but man it, it as much as i was like at first kind of thinking too like oh man it's another mouse controlled game like it, it almost couldn't work any other way that risk reward of like should i move should i be aiming should i be you know because you can again you can upgrade like how quick you can target onto enemies some enemies take multiple missiles so you hover over them for longer to like target them multiple times like oh uh. uh, it's just it's just an amazing game like truly an amazing game i can't stop playing it it's like Damn. every time i every time i play a game on my computer i'm i'm like should I play a little ecstatic real quick? <laughs> um, it's awesome. And then uh, real quick before I toss it over to John uh, to another game, another top down arcade game from maybe my favorite game developer. I just feel like it's been a while since I've given Cultisti a shout out yeah. and, um, and they're cranking out games all the time, whether it's for game jams or whatever it might be. But they just put a new game out. I don't think this was made for a game jam because number one, it's got like even it's got an extra layer of polish that their games always have. But it just feels like, oh, man, this is like 
I almost feel like this is like a commercial game. I don't know why they just put this up online for free, <laughs> but basically it's like a top down arcade like platformer. And it's actually pretty similar to this game they made for a low res jam called line off. And I might've even talked about that on the podcast. You're just like top down, just trying to jump over all the obstacles that are coming. But the way this works, it's like presented almost like a game show. And there's this curse ball that basically bounces around the screen Almost kind of reminds me a little bit of even like disc room, except instead of trying to dodge the disc, you're actually trying to hit the ball. Okay. And you're just, you literally just have to touch it. And then when you touch it, you actually bounce off of it. And then you can sort of use that as like a double jump. Otherwise, you just have a single jump. Right. That you get like, it's really low res. It's not, it's not as low res as line off, but it's still like, it's, it's crazy how well you can tell like how high you are in the air just by like how big the shadow, the little square shadow is on the ground, but like in the, in the squish of the pixels and stuff. But, <laughs> Basically, you're just like, it's kind of, I think it's a roguelike, but it's, you're definitely just kind of going for a high score. And then every, like, basically you pick, like after you beat a stage or like a series of rooms, then you're like presented with like a series of three doors that you pick between. And then that'll be like the next world of levels will be like those type of levels. So if you pick like the, the train, then it's like kind of like these moving track platforms that you're on. If you pick the Mm. like Swiss cheese door, it's like platforms with holes everywhere. Um, If you bet there's like a bunch of different options. And then after that, it goes to like more of like a wheel of fortune wheel that's spinning like so fast. Like there's no way you can try to be like, Oh, let me time it and you know, get the thing I want. It's just so fast. You hit a button to stop it. And then that tells you what curse you're going to have for the next room. And then that just adds to what obstacles. So if it's like Uh, missiles, now you're getting missiles, being launched at you from either side from off the screen and then if you clear that zone the same thing happens you pick the next type of room then you pick the next obstacle and it might be like a spinning gear thing that goes around the room so now you have the gears and the missiles to dodge and it just keeps stacking up higher and higher and really your only ability is to just jump (laughs) and dodge stuff but it's if you're able to like bounce off the curse ball and then like time your double jump perfectly you can land on the ball again and get like like keep a combo going i couldn't keep a combo going for the life of me but it's an amazing game and the music oh my god like a lot of cultistes games are like very like uh, the music's amazing but it's more of like a soundscape like very ambient or ambient and like just kind of like I was going to say ambiance and I couldn't decide which, which, <laughs> which to say, one but you're saying. very ambient, and like just <laughs> kind of like moody and stuff. But this is like just as soon as you fired up, it's just these like slamming chip tunes with so much energy, um, tons of cool palettes. Like it, it's an incredible game. Like I'm, I'm absolutely just it blows my mind that anyone would put this out there for free. But it's it's amazing. Yeah, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. Nice. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I've gushed enough for now, although I do have one more game to gush about before we wrap up, but I'm going to throw it over to John for a little uh, little voxel action, I think. Yeah, I'm pl- so I've been playing Moonglow Bay, which I started off this year thinking, oh, I'm, o- I'm only going to play like my backlog. I'm not going to buy any new games. <laughs> and this yeah. was the first game that I was like, ah, shit, nope, I'm buying this. <laughs> <laughs> It came out on Steam, so I picked it up, and it is a uh, 3D uh, kind of town-building fishing sim game that is mostly voxel art uh, when you are, you know, moving around. Nice. But it does have a lot of, like, really nicely drawn, like, character profiles and, like, fish profiles and other uh, other parts of the game as well so it's got this nice mix between the two art styles that i think are really charming it's but a really pretty game yeah i and i really needed a chill game mm-hmm. <laughs> to like escape all that to. elden ring yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah between elden ring and like triangle strategy it was just like cool i'm yeah. just playing like really tense stressful <laughs> games <laughs> like, yeah in your so, time yeah yeah, this was <laughs> real nice. And I'm always a sucker for like any fishing mini game in any game. And yes. like, yeah, so completely I was co-signed. super pumped to for that to be like the main draw of the game is like this is a, a game about you have you are in this like sleepy, like Atlantic town, North Atlantic town, like and there uh, everybody is afraid of fish and your partner uh was claimed by the sea and has been missing for years presumed dead and like so you're in in this uh town and nobody else goes into the bay because they're all afraid of the ocean 
and your daughter comes and she's there for an internship at the like town hall and they're going to like shutter the town. So then you start this whole revitalization project where you are going out and fishing and selling like food that you've made with the fresh fish that you catch. And that's how you like invest in like, Oh, I'm going to donate the fish I catch. Like every time you catch a new one, you can donate it to the museum. Nice. And nice. Anytime that museum. Oh yeah. You yeah. can, uh, donate it to the inn or the bar where people will have rumors of new areas that you can go to and fish. And nice. like, it is just a really nice, like low stakes, like, but uh, at the very beginning of the game, I talked to someone and I was like, Oh, what can I do for you? Like, that was just an option. And they're like, Oh, can you like, uh, prepare me this one meal? And it was a fish I've never encountered and a meal I've never encountered. And I was like, ah, shit. Did I like start myself on a quest that like I'm already locked into? And then like, every time I like talk to this person, I'm like, still haven't gotten you your tuna sashimi. And they're like, (laughs) Hey, don't worry about it. Well, like whatever. So like, (laughs) it is really good at like, you know, just it gives you a ton of stuff to do and you can do it at your own pace. And yes. like I, I've really been like, you know, unlocking like little new things that for the vending machine outside my house that like I put all of my prepared dishes. And I the thing that I actually really love about the cooking mechanic in it is that each step of cooking is kind of like it, you go into your own kitchen And you like there are multiple steps like that you have to do for each dish. Like you have to get the food out of the fridge. You have to take it. And some of them you have to wash it first or you have to chop it or then you have to bake it, or fry it. And they're all like individual steps that you have Mm -hmm. to do in the order of the recipe. And each step is basically I'm not sure if this was on purpose or if they were just trying to come up with other mechanics, but it's basically every like fishing like mechanic in any of every other game that I've ever played that has a fishing mini game, like that mechanic is like isolated to either the washing step or the chopping step or the frying step. So like, even though there is the bespoke, like uh fishing mechanic in the game of itself, like this is how like, Oh, you know, you're pulling the analog stick in the opposite direction of the right. fish and you're, using the shoulder buttons to reel in or like like quickly reel in like in uh i think it's for chopping like there's a radial thing and you have to press it when it's at the exact points or if there is uh i think it's washing like there's a bar that moves left and right and you need to like have the cursor go left and right with it and like these are all like Mm -hmm. ways that other like the fishing mini games have worked in like various other games like i was like oh i remember that mechanic that's from like this game or like that's from this game or like and again i don't know if that was on purpose or if that's just like you know you have to come up with individual mechanics on like cooking or right fishing and it just so happens to be like oh yeah i already have this skill from breath of fire 2 or genshin <laughs> impact or Link's awakening like it's wow it's really charming and like again low stakes just nice chill fun that's awesome and you've been playing on your laptop you said you yeah. bought it on steam because yeah. that's kind of i mean again it's it is like voxels so it's not like you know it's not the most demanding thing but i but i i would assume like your laptop's older than mine i think right or i don't and, know and there's definitely some Same like chugging but again i i do not care about <laughs> for a game like that it's not certainly not going to matter i mean i guess you might like whiff a uh, a fish catching moment or something, mm-hmm. but, and I am playing with a controller. So I actually don't know how the, that would be actually be a very interesting because it does have uh, mouse and keyboard support. I would, I'm very curious actually how the like cooking mechanics are different versus like uh, with a mouse and keyboard instead of a, I'm sure it's probably just WASD or moving the cursor, mm-hmm. but yeah, so. but it could be at least in theory, it could be fun to again, it, it wouldn't really incorporate any of the mechanic, the mechanics that you're talking about. But like if you like I can kind of picture like moving the mouse around in a way that you're like sauteing some fish in a pan mm-hmm. and kind of like making it feel dynamic or whatever. Yeah, that could be kind of cool. But 
probably not what they're doing if they're kind of, but that that would be really cool if all the mechanics and of cooking are kind of like an homage to other fishing mini games or whatever yeah uh, it's a it's a, a pleasant game and i needed a nice pleasant <laughs> game to escape to well, Absolutely. that's that's honestly a perfect uh, way to go into my last game here uh, that I've been playing uh, just for the last uh, like day or two. Pretty much. I just dove into this game, uh, Ella Fantasy, and that's uh, fantasy, all one word, but fantasy with a PH sure. elephant style. Yeah. Um, but this is a really cool game from uh, the developer's name is Linker or they go by Linker. Um, and they have a bunch of other games, too, that I, I discovered their stuff through the uh, Itch.io bundle for racial justice and equality. Polymute was the game that was included in that that I really, really loved. I n- never finished it or anything, but just a really cool, actually mouse only controlled game to the best of my knowledge, at least. Um, but just like a really cool puzzle, like it's all about like morphing into other like talking to different creatures and then you like get the ability to morph into them. And then you have like the ability to, you know, do stuff. It's just got a really cool like all of their games like or a lot of their games at least have like a very distinct style that you're right away like, oh, this almost looks like a ZX Spectrum game or it looks like a Pico 8 game or it looks like a whatever, like kind of this era game, but it's not strictly that. Like this game, Ella Fantasy, like almost reminds me of like a DOS game to the degree of like it's very retro. It's it's kind of like a Metroidvania platformer, but not really a platformer. Like you're kind of moving like grid by grid, mm. tile by tile. Like you don't really have a jump you're you only have the ability like once you it's it's a metroidvania basically like a giant map to explore pretty giant map actually that uh so the main mechanic is there's basically you just get tossed into this world and like there's no music it's just all like sound effects um although i think there's i think there might be music later in the game or something or on the title screen but like very minimal but there's (laughs) there's a there's a music volume option in the options so i'm like i'm assuming there's a little more music than just that little like tinkling on the also not screen. uncommon for dos games yes. well that's what i mean yeah it feels like very it feels very like true to that and it's like one of those games where kind of like vvv vvv where like not necessarily every room but almost every room has like its own name or every area at the very least but basically the way the game works is like you start out with no, there's no gem or you have no gems and you can see right out right where you like spawn or start the game there's like a shopkeeper and this like gem that at least to up to this point, I still can't figure out how to get that first gem you can see. But as soon as you get one gem, you then are upgraded to rank one. And then that shopkeeper has four items in their shop. They have a ring, like kind of like a strength ring that lets you lift items. They're, they're essentially your abilities. Nice. And once you're rank one, you're allowed to rent one of those abilities at a time. So you have, again, the ring for strength. You have like these boots that are kind of like sprinting boots. So it's like that that's sort of like your jump. Like if there's a gap that's like one tile, if you're sprinting, you can like run over that gap and clear it. But then like otherwise jumping is like you can climb up one tile like, you know, you kind of grab it and pull yourself up. That's yeah, basically all you can do jump wise. But when you get the ring, there'll be like these pots you can grab and move around and pick up and you can even actually climb and up and down ladders with those and then place them to you know, get up to a higher platform that you wouldn't be able to reach or you can get. So, again, let me just do the four items. So you got the ring for extra power. You got the boots for speed. You got these seeds that you can pick up that you drop and like almost like create like a they plant like a flower that you can climb up like a ladder awesome. almost. Um, and then you have like a scuba mask that you can or a, you know, some kind of what, are, what is it called? Not the mask, but the snorkel. Yeah. Um, and you can go underwater when you have that. Um, and then once you get six gems, so the shopkeeper's like, once you get six gems, come back, and then you can rent two items at a time. So then you, so as you go out and explore, you're like, okay, here's a dead end when I get over here with the boots. But if I can do the boots and the seeds combined, I can probably mm-hmm. climb up this area. And it's one of those games too, where again, like the the screen doesn't scroll at all. So it's like you kind of see like, oh, there's like, I wonder if I plant a this flower at the top of this platform, like is there another screen up above here that I can't Mm. see that has like a Ah, secret up there? And there's lots of stuff like that. And there's really cool, like hidden gems everywhere. Like I, I'm at, so now when I get 12 gems, I'll be able to rent three items at once. I'm at 11 gems right now. And I'm actually kind of mad because I know I was actually playing. I had five gems last night and I accidentally clicked on new game today. Oh, when I, when I went to play and it's like, there was no fair warrant. No, like, Hey, are you sure this might overwrite your file? Literally. It was just like new game right now. (laughs) And I was like, Oh shit. Well, and I know, so I have 11 gems and I know there's at least one, maybe even two that I had when I was playing yesterday. 
um, that I haven't found yet. I found like a couple new ones this time around, or well, a bunch of new ones, but definitely a couple that I don't recall getting. But there's even like some abilities that. Well, there's a few other things at the bottom of the screen beyond those four abilities, so I don't know if I'm going to maybe, like, get those down the line, um, you know, that'll be something that are just, like, permanently equipped or something, because there there does seem to be a boss battle, like, there's, like, this, like, snow ice area that I'm going to, and, like, in that area, like, if you walk, again, like, if it's icy, you just slide until you get to, like, a safe tile that doesn't have ice on it, so it's just very like grid heavy it's very retro it's like almost like janky retro in a way that's like but it's i mean everything controls fine and fluid and smooth there's no like actual jank to it but it's like you know what i mean like it's just like it's so rigid yeah in the like inputs you can be a little like you know if you don't you can be like a half a tile off sometimes with some of the placement but yeah it's like you can't step off the ladder if you're not like perfectly lined up with the tile you know with the little (laughs) tunnel that's one you know exactly your character's height but that's kind of cool though that makes it more puzzle focused i feel like that way it's like really informing you what you can do right like these are your options like yeah and the and the exploration is awesome like there's there's a really great map like it's not super again it's like really retro map but it's like pretty detailed in the sense that you can see how big it is and where you haven't gone but i definitely have like where I thought I was like, okay, it probably get that 12 gems is probably going to be like, maybe there'll be a 13th gem. And now I'm like, oh no, there's, but there's going to be like 25, 30. I mean, I don't know, but I definitely found like two, three, four new areas that are like totally unexplored that are, you know, seem to open the game like wide open in both different directions. And there's like, yeah, apparently there's some boss battles. Cause like it, it, it does like, it's like, make sure you test your reflexes or whatever. So there, even though it's not like, actiony per se there are like slight moments like you have to like use the boots to run on these treadmills that then lift these doors or like you know lift these platform yeah. things or whatever that then you can sprint and make it under it in time like it's just it's a really cool game it's really fun to explore and it's actually a perfect it's actually one of very few games that i can play it's you know otherwise i would need to remap you some anti-micro which that's actually what i did for the cultisti game curse ball is like i can't play this with keyboard controls i need to play with the game pad but for this game since it's not really all that action driven i'm just kind of like oh, yeah, i can just play this with the keyboard it's pretty much just all waz controls even when you get the power-ups it's just like you just press down to like lift the you know bucket or not buckets the pots above your head but there's just a few npcs floating around you can talk to they give you little hints it just it's scratching all the even uh, like i don't have a ton of nostalgia for like dos era games but i for whatever reason it's like hitting those notes and i'm just like yeah this is sweet um it's awesome i i really think you and but you guys would both probably like it uh, to be honest but randall you in particular i think would really oh yeah really dig this one but it's i'm I'm really impressed. I was really into the, I didn't play a ton of it, but what I played of Polymute, I really liked, but this game, I'm kind of like, especially now that I like started over and I have already made a ton more progress. Cause I was like, I'm going to talk about this on the podcast tonight. I'm just chilling. I might as well play some more of this game. And then when I started over, I was like, Oh, should I just <laughs> stay where I'm at and just call it quits? And I'm like, no, now that I'm up to 11 gems again, I'm, I'm into it. And yeah, there's even like kind of like a 3D like diorama version of the map that you can oh, look at. Um, yeah. Still very. I mean, it's again in that very retro pixel style, that's but sweet, it's though. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, that, yeah. None of that's a complaint. It almost feels like what was what that uh, elephant Babar Babar? Yes. Yeah. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Babar a little Babar, bit. Yes. Mm. Um, just in the, at least in the level of cuteness, it's like the most <laughs> adorable game. It's like the charm levels and cute levels are just off the charts. That's can't great. recommend this game enough and it's currently i think the reason i started playing is because it like popped up that it was currently on sale on itch.io or something i think full price it's like 10 bucks but it was in the bundle itch.io bundle for ukraine nice and in another bundle it said i owned it twice so <laughs> <laughs> so not only an awesome game but uh from an awesome developer that contributed their stuff to an awesome cause but met multiple awesome causes so um, That's awesome. double the reason to support them so no doubt um yeah really cool game i can't wait to play more maybe i'll have a if i end up beating it i'll i'll give a little recap or something but yeah i think we can probably wrap up the uh video games chat there this week and again i will definitely fill you in on some more strikers uh oh yeah chat once we uh, get a chance to play that and some other stuff i can't wait for that uh online gaming session but at the risk of being a broken record and rambling here at the end uh per usual uh you can find us on the internet at pursuingpixels.com 
and pretty much everywhere else on the internet. Uh, we've got a bunch of uh, actually like sp- kind of scheduled. Uh, if you go into our Discord, I'm gonna try to start using the events tab a little bit more to try to like we got some scheduled interview live streams with developers coming up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post about them too, obviously, but I'm gonna try to like kind of be a little bit more like, hey, if we're actually doing something at a certain time and place, like I'm gonna put it on the Discord. So. Come hang with us there, and otherwise, in the meantime, we'll uh, catch you next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Man, Pico 8 is just the greatest fucking thing in the world. I meant to ask you about that, because, yeah, I I, I literally even wrote down, I wrote down loop pedal and Pico 8 waves, (laughs) just in case... Cause it, yeah. So it just yeah, crazy. Randall. I don't know if you were wa- reading the music channel in the Discord, but like, no. I I uh, so I got a loop pedal uh, uh-huh. because like, uh, wow well, for for the synth stuff or yeah for the synth stuff and like Mikey and I have always like talked about doing like a a something just more either instrumental or like funk based and we're yeah, yeah uh, like putting. Uh, wheels in motion like not actually like actually you know seriously doing anything but it's like yeah we should fuck around and do something like actually do something yeah. yes exactly and so we uh i was like you know what i found a loop pedal that was like 30 bucks online which yeah. is insane like i honestly unbelievable and one of the features was that like it can it has a usb cord and like connectivity so you can just load like backing tracks onto it as long as they're oh, in a geez. wave file wow um and like uh, initially i was like yeah that's something like down the line that that's like i don't know something that we could do but in the meantime i'm like let me just like write some like really simple loops like in wave files and export them to that yeah and i was trying to do it on whatever soft like free open source software i got and i was like nope i i'm i can't I don't have the patience to like watch (laughs) all of these YouTube tutorials to like get like just the simplest beat. And then I like, for whatever reason, Googled Pico eight export to wave file. And literally if you are in the Pico eight and music or like sound tab, if you hit escape and then go export to, or just X type export and then file name dot wave. It'll create that a wave rules. file. It is unbelievable. That's like, so cool. It, and then it, like you could just type folder and it'll show what full, like it'll bring up the like app data folder. Or oh my whatever God. That it's it really through. is like a little virtual retro computer. It like, is so good. That's like, amazing. Yeah. Punk. Punk Cake uses Pico 8 for pretty much all of their sound effects still, yeah. which wow. is awesome. I mean, it, and, like, the sound editor, it's, like, I had forgotten a lot, so I kind of had to, like, I, I was at Gruber videos. Like, I was just, yeah, like, yeah. going, and, like, as soon as I watched it, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember everything. Like, this was a really good video a while ago, and it was, like, how to do a drum loop in uh, whatever, and it, like, shows you exactly what settings, like, it's like, oh, here are the wave. This is what the waveform you select. This is right. the volume select. This is the effect on that. And even since then, they've added additional effects that uh, can be put on, like as post processing. Jesus, but yeah, there's yeah, they like keep a, updating Pico Eight. Yeah, oh it's God. so good. There's like a detune thing where it adds like a little, oh, uh, like Ooh, a little sourness. That's it kind of cool, adds. I've, it's almost more of like a chorus effect. Okay, I was gonna say, is it like spooky at all? Because I've definitely heard some Pico Eight games that have like a weird, like that kind of like. Ooh. Yeah, there's there's a well, there's a vibrato setting that is that was built in before so okay. there's a vibrato there is a uh reverb and like also a uh buzz which is like a nice distortion but like yeah i was just okay i was exp- i was just building like really simple loops that were like kilobytes of data because it's just the tiniest thing and yeah. i was like all right i got a couple of these these are some good ideas for next time like mikey and i meet up and then i like tried dragging them over to the like loop or i plugged it in and it showed up on my computer but that every time i tried dragging the files onto it it was like nope can't do this and i was getting like 
super bummed out. It's like, ah, I fucked up. I, I like got like a, I, it was too good to be true or whatever. Right. And then like, I kept looking into like FAQs and it was mostly people being like, like, ah, I plugged in the things the wrong way. Did I break this pedal like forever? <laughs> yeah. Or like, it was, yeah. People who didn't understand like how like, like guitar pedals. At all. Yeah, exactly. Right. And then like, I was like, what I found one that was like very specifically like the exact problem I had where it was like, doesn't recognize this. And then like most people were like, oh, try disabling like auto updates on drivers. And that didn't work for me. And then like one person like all the way at the bottom was like, hey, this pedal is super finicky about the wave files it accepts. Here is like the exact stats of every like file that it encodes. Boom. And if you are like every time that you put a file in it, it will encode it to that. So like try to get it as close as possible to that. So it's like here are the like bit rates that it needs to be oh at. Gosh. Here is the okay, yeah. kilohertz <laughs> that it needs to be at. And like Jeez. I looked at it and I was like, all right, uh, let's just try doing it at a second or at like. 48 or 48 kilohertz and immediately perfect no problems whatsoever i was like cool that was the only thing i had to do was export it from pico 8 put it into audacity and re-export it at a like a different kilohertz level that's That's not bad it's uh, it's great but like if it wasn't for that one person thank you you (laughs) are the greatest person yeah but well, they didn't just say never you... mind. I figured it out. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. You gotta love when you find somebody who's like literally. Yeah, they have like your exact situation yep. typed out. You're like, yes, 